Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're live here with you at the Speak Your Mind show. We're having a, a wonderful show tonight. Of course, we, we're planning to address some of the pertinent issues that are affecting us in the Virgin Islands. And we'll, of course, try to dialogue with the citizens from Anigata to Joshua Dyke, the entire territory. And I say good evening and, and welcome to the show. And I have my guest, as usual, here with me tonight. And you know, allow him now to introduce himself as well and let's let's get rolling good night everyone my name is bevan george and tell a friend to tell a friend speak your mind is on and let's start a discussion yeah there we go um, I, I i have a couple of topics that i wanted to to touch on real quickly in addition to anything that will come in on the line whether on the on the the text or the, or the calls but i wanted to talk about the Con the road construction, the ongoing road construction. And it's, some of it is challenging. I had my challenges, but at the same time, some of it is, is completed and, and some is ongoing. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you have your views on the current, uh, the, the current uh, activities that are going on as far as the road works are concerned, my main concern about it, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that the information is not coming out in a timely manner to allow us to plan our activities. And I think that can be corrected with a little public relations. Just, just you know, remember that we're doing all of this for the citizens of this country, so they're the boss, those citizens, those, those good citizens, they're the boss, so you should let your boss know what you're doing from time to time. And I think it's very important to, to you know, put that across so that we know where work is planned for a particular time. So we could plan a couple of minutes ahead uh, so, so we can take our time. Another thing, ladies and gentlemen, we need to slow down in these areas. Don't get frustrated. Just slow down. A lot of times the workmen have their back turned to the traffic. So be mindful of that and be mindful of safety. Safety, of course, is a number one issue. However, we know that the country is growing and these, these various changes will take place. Just let the citizens know in a timely manner so that we can plan our activities around or, or, or take a different route. It's not like, like years gone by when we only had one road. There, there are two or three roads now. So if you, if you, you don't have to take the one road to get to a particular place. You can plan an alternate, an alternate route. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, um, the road situation of course, we, we want improvement, we want better water supply, we want better electricity. All these services are usually done in the road. And we, we abide by, you know, by the changes, but at the same time, we need adequate advice. Uh, well, not so much advice, but ade adequate notice. So those persons who are in charge, who are responsible for, for, the, for these things, I'm pretty sure will take note and, you know, work with the public. Work with the public and have us, have, us, uh, have us in the loop, have us informed so that we can make better decisions. So that's one of the things I was going to, to touch on uh, for the Bevan. You have any burning issues that well, you want to touch on? You see, this week we had um, the budget speech. Right. And, you know, that started a, a big wildfire. Yeah. And everybody here, tax increase. Yeah. If you go see from um, the budget increase from since since last year, like by nineteen million dollars. Yeah. Last year we projected to receive three hundred and eleven million dollars in revenue. Yes. And this year they're projecting three hundred and thirty million. Yeah. It's about eleven million dollars increase. Yeah. So. And you see that when everybody talk about the tax increase, by that spins some heads. Yeah. Because we have a right. Everybody, some people feel that like their pocket 
your pocket tight now. Yeah. So how you going to come in, raise taxes, and everybody feel you're just wasting the money. Mm -hmm. But you have to look at where he say he was going to increase the fees. He right. say he raising fees, yes. not necessarily raising your tax. Because we pay, do our payroll tax and not tax on your income. Mm -hmm. So, and he fixing um, the import duties. Mm -hmm. Most of government revenue comes from financial services. Yes. The, um, the payroll tax, mm -hmm. import duty, mm -hmm. and other fees, other fees like stamp duty. Yes. That's the fees that we pay, and that's how government make their money. Yeah. So, it go hand in hand. If we need to make more money or they're projecting this increase, mm -hmm. the money have to come from some place. Mm -hmm. And ain't necessarily are they taxing the, the public, but the fees need to go up. Mm -hmm. If they walk with a person making over two hundred and thousand dollars a year, why is he paying the same work permit fee as a person who cleaning the floor? Correct. He could afford more, so obviously we need to fix that so we could charge him a little more. He only contributing more because he making more from the country. It's only fair. Mm -hmm. But my problem with the government, though, they keep saying they're increasing, they, the budget keep increasing every year. Yeah. But up to now, they ain't giving you um, any financial report. Mm -hmm. How it is you telling me you, how I supposed to know you make the 311 million last year? Yes, you had a, According to the House of Assembly, you have um, you spent extra mm -hmm. over the budget, mm -hmm. well at least twenty two to twenty three million dollars extra over budget. Yes, you spend that money. You you can't spend that money unless you collect it. Right. So that means you make some kind of money, but we the public don't know. And the opposition need to step up and force the government hand and tell them, look, we want to see your audited books. Because the last government, the last administration, which was the Virgin Islands Party administration, you have their figures, you can find them on the internet. Their audited figures of how much money they collect. When they were in power, they collect over $280 million a year. Yeah. Well, you know, you're raising some, some good points. And it draw me to some, a couple of things that I, I spoke about before. And one of them is... Uh, the professional licensing and that is one way of ensuring that you have transparency and quality reporting. I'll give you an example. If we have a situation where the, the recently there was a bill for the licensing and the, the regulating of lawyers yeah. and it caused a lot of uh, a debate and a lot of different persons having different opinions about it. But it's a step in changing the way we do business. The same thing you alluded to about people making one amount of money and people making more and not, not uh, contributing towards the country based on, you know, on the amount that, that they're allowed to make in the country. So hopefully if we get on now and move from the lawyers and go to architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, uh, accounting officers, uh, accountants, uh, auditors, etc. Once we put the, the legal framework in place, uh, how you can call yourself these things in the first place, yeah. what kind of documents you could sign in the second place, and you know, the, the, the whole framework. Once we put that framework in place, I think you, you start to see things coming together a little bit more in order with what it should be. Yeah. In some places, I know if you're not a certified public accountant, you can't, you can't do an audit. And we, we, we may be, um, you know, we may be in a gray area here as far as I'm concerned, uh, because we have failed to regulate these professional people. I, I have to say these professional people because I am a professional person myself and I'm, a, I'm not regulated. <laughs> So I'm, 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 you You're know. talking from experience. <laughs> I'm talking, talking, a... talking, but I'm talking from fact. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking a factual situation. Um, we, we have to, we have to take 
more interest in this area. And it also prepares the young people coming after us. They're coming into a, a, a structured uh, profession, be it accounting, be it uh, engineering. You know, they're coming in a structured area and they, they, before they graduate, they know what the requirements are. Yeah. And they know what to expect. And they know their rights. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we, we need to step up, you know. There are a number of other professions that are already regulated and we take our hats off to them. We're glad that they're regulated because persons coming here or even young people coming back to the territory, they, they can fit in accordingly without having to ask any, any, um, any unnecessary questions yeah. because they know what the, 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 uh, the, the parameters are. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, I've been begging and asking and screaming for us to regulate, regulate the industries, the various industries, the professional industries, so that we have some framework to fall back on, so I don't have to ask unnecessary favors. So, you, you know, we know in advance when the young persons go to study for four years. So, you know, studying for four or five years is a long time, and then you return to the territory, and then somebody, you know, questioning, if you, if you know what you're doing. Well, the question, first of all, they say, what school you went to? They want to know which school you went to. All of this is taken into account when you're doing a framework for professional practice. Yeah. You have to understand the, the, the various type of schools and what, 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 what the educational requirement is and what the, what the job requirement is. Some, of them, some professions have on the job training as part of your, your, your licensing requirement. Mm -hmm. And this is a serious issue to me. It's also a, um, a, a safety issue because it, 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 it lends um, the, the fact that persons wouldn't just jump into a profession, but they would get a certain amount of, of uh, internship. Yeah. It's there for the legal, uh, no, uh, sorry, <laughs> I almost went to say it's there for the legal profession, but it's there for the, um, for the, the medical profession, as far as I know. You have to... You have to complete a certain number of years in practice before you, you know, before you're able to, to operate practice on, on your own. people. Yeah. So, you know, we, th these are all common sense things. These are all very practical things that we're talking about. And they, 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 we shouldn't have to be talking about them because we're, we're a growing country and we're, we're, not, we're not infants anymore. Yeah. We passed the infant stage. We're talking millions of dollars now. We don't talk thousands of dollars anymore we only talk millions yeah this country yeah. really it's growing it's growing it's growing it's a little different than than uh, what i used to know it to be so we have to move with the times and we have to step up to the plate so that ties right back in with what you were saying about you know the 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 budget and the reporting and and all of that kind of stuff because i too would like to see some report yeah we, need, we need to have a uh, the report of the expenditure and the revenue for the last few years. Yeah. Whether, it's, whether it was a, a, um, a good experience or a bad experience, we, we also learn from, from, uh, from reports. You know, when we get a report and it says, well, you know, we had X, Y, Z and we did, you know, you can, you can draw inference. From, you also can predict, you can, you, can, yeah, you, you predict. can look into the future a little bit. You can say, well, if we were able to do this, then maybe we'll be able to do X, Y, Z. Yeah. But without the, the actual information. You're just, just guessing we're and just, shooting in the wind. We're just guessing and shooting in the wind. And that's, that's not nice for a whole country. I mean, that might be nice for a small mom and pop shop just, just, uh, just selling candies. But if we're talking about uh, a complex thing like, like a government, which is really a big business with a lot of employees, a lot of expenses, you know, day yeah, to day. Some of the biggest expenses yes. for the government is um, the tree off the back. Yes. Is tourist board in the college. Yeah. The health services. Right. And water and sewage. So I guess that's why when he said it's fixing the water rates, yeah. water and sewage. That account for like close to fifteen million dollars a year. Yeah. Out of the government expenditure. Right. The other biggest thing is education. Yeah. So education is like close to twenty-five million dollars a year. Mm. 
And we got to understand that. $25 million dollars a year, in, that's not the budgeted amount, though. The budgeted amount is something like $57 million. Well, there could be more. It is, yeah. it is about $57 million, and that's per year. We got text that came in. Let's see what the good citizens are saying. It says, labor code, need changing, where we pay social security on gratuity. Hmm. Well, um, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. I, 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 read that, I read into that that you're inferring that if you already pay Social Security while you're working, then when you get a gratuity, uh, you shouldn't have to pay Social Security on it. Now, um, I, I have to look into that personally, but I can, I can, um, I can understand what you're, what you're inferring to. It's, 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 I guess it's like a double jeopardy. Yeah, yeah double it taxing me twice. It taxing twice. Well. And, um, I, I, I don't, and I don't by the way, I'd like, I, I like to clear up one thing right now, though. A lot of persons see a gratuity as something like a, a gift or, or, or some, some ex, something extra, but it's actually something that a person works for. Good evening. You have reached Speak Your Mind. Go right ahead, please. Yeah, good night. Good night. Good night to both of you and your listeners. Good night. Yes. Yeah. I have a question that I will speak in some answer. Now, NHIC is a fun of Now, if my if the boss do not take out NHI, even though the employee don't sign up, would the employee be penalized by the end? Then, let me say, when he go to renew his work permit or uh, whatever, if the company is ready stuff, but yes. the, the boss not taking out any NHI for his own personal reason. I Let's say he is not agreeing with NHI. Are you sure are you sure he isn't taking it out? Or he, or he's I'm paying sure, it? I'm sure, I'm or, sure. Or maybe he's paying it for you. No, I'm I'm, I'm sure. So that's what I'm asking. What will be the consequence of this? I would like to have a clarity on this. Okay. If it will be a penalty and, and who will get this penalty? Again it, it sounds it sounds like it sounds to me like the penalty is going to fall on the employee but i think um in, in since we're talking about a, a a very new situation it might be in your best interest to inform the social security the, sorry the nhi board that you're in this predicament yeah. that's the safest thing to do in in farm no? you, you you you're reading me yes yes, yes i'm listening to you. I, I think well, it I think it would be in your best interest to inform the NHI board that I you... Was thinking, I was thinking about that, but they also say the, the employee cannot come in and pick his own NHI. So, what other choice that we have? If that is the case. Mm. Now, I know, I, know, I know of another instance which is different from yours, where the employer is taking out the NHI regardless. Whether you register or not. Well, <laughs> I mean, like I say, the company is registered. I went to do what I have to do. I already got collect my card. I spoke with my boss. He has his own view about the NHI, which I have to respect that. But um, I believe in the long run, what they will do is that people who are work permit, when you go and renew your work permit, they will now sign out if you're paying. That is the way they will check. So what will happen now? I don't want to be penalized by the ending of my work permit when I go to renew it now. They tell me like, social security at once. They used to ask you for your social security number to see if you're up to date. Yes. And if you don't, then they refuse the whole, they have a whole on your work permit. So this is my concern. I hope the people who is in that position listening and can call in and have some clarity on this. Because I show there are other people like me in this position. Thank you. I will be so happy. All right. Well, thanks a lot for your call. Yes. All right. That's a good. That's a good. Um, a good debatable situation. Yeah. And we always have to, as usual, refer to the www.nhibvi.com. Yeah. Because that is the website where the, the, you know that's a portal for communicating with the the citizens. Well, I never. I don't. I never hear them answer that that question there like yeah. yeah but 
But it is a it is a valid question, yeah. you know, and it is a valid concern. And you know, if Social Security, if you don't pay that, yeah. Social Security book will carry to jail, or the employer will be the one getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. But this NHI, I never, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I well, don't know who will be in trouble. It seemed like both. I think both persons will be in, involved because remember that it's a two-part payment. It's, but it could the, be a two-part. I think one part. That shouldn't be fair on the employee because yeah. my employee is the one taking it out. If yeah. if he don't go and pay, if he's taking it out, well, <laughs> he's supposed to take it out because yeah. that's the last thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he don't go and pay, I shouldn't be penalized for that. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to take a break for the sponsors that make the show possible. So we're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back with you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we're right back with you after a short break. I had a text that came in, a, a, a little correction to, to what was said earlier. The person is saying, no, we need to pay the, the, um, the Social Security on base salary and gratuity. So that's, that's, that's that person's opinion. I, I tend to differ a little bit because there's also uh, some working conditions where you, you not only get gratuity, but you get um, other, other types of payments. And I think it's, it's, it would be unfair to persons who earn some advantage by working to have to pay twice. So that's, that's, you know, that's, that's my take on that. The next text came in, said retirement age in some government department is under 65, but then you don't get social security till you reach 65 years if age need this age need to adjust well there's a lot of talk about that yeah they got a lot i think yeah. they were trying to they say they're going to raise the, the age to 65. that that's but, one that's one thing that i heard as well where they're, yeah. they're planning to raise the age the walking age yeah to 65 to, 65 to coincide with the social security. the social security benefit age which is 65. Yeah. But that, that also brings up another issue, which is, uh, you know, senior citizen and senior citizen rights and senior citizen discount and, and senior citizen treatment in the banks and in the, in the grocery store and a number of other issues, which, you know, we need to have a, a serious conversation with the public about. You know, I see, I see seniors being, in some cases, being treated like everybody else. I, I, I was so applauded in being in Europe and you see that military people and senior citizens get the first car in every train on some, on some, um, on some lines. They, there's reserve mm -hmm. for the military and for, the, and for the, the, the senior citizens. So then again also in, tr in, tr in Trinidad, the, the, the seniors, they're allowed to, to, to go to Tobago for free on the government um, uh, run lines just because you're a senior. There must be some advantages to being a senior. Yeah. You know, and, and I think um, we, need to, we need to take a, a, a better look at, at this. I also know that there's some businesses here that require a senior to have a, 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 a senior card issued by the company and renewed every year. That, 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 I mean, <laughs> we renewed every year. <laughs> Even, good evening, you're free to speak your mind. Go right ahead, please. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, my brother. How are you? Mr. Bevan, good evening to the young man there with you. Okay, Mr. Bevan. Mr. Bevan. Good. Good. I'm calling you tonight because um, I'm trying to get some insight on the NHI. Okay. I have a friend who went to the hospital. Actually, the person went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And the doctor sent him to the lab to do some lab work. Okay. The labs came up to six hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, the hospital told them that they had to pay a hundred dollars. Okay. So the lady said to um, the, the patient said to the lady, "Well, why do I have to pay a hundred dollars?" She said, "Because total labs for the year on the NHI is five hundred dollars. Right. So you already born up your five hundred dollars. So you now have to put a hundred dollars." so that you can get your labs um, taken. Okay. Uh, my concern here is, 
if NHI is only going to pay to each person the amount of, contribute the amount of $500 to lab work for the year, then uh, we may the trouble. Well, a, lo a lot of this, a lot of this stuff is on their website. You know, they they have a, a whole detail of various areas of service and how much the deductible is and and stuff like that. They have all of that stuff on their website. Well, Cody, irrespective of what is on the website, mm -hmm. I am talking about something that is a work of the something. Okay. No, if you're going to tell somebody who is contributing almost three hundred dollars a month to NHI that if they're sick once a year, they're going to burn up all the labs. Then you're simply telling them that you have the contribution you're making every month. It cannot help you if you're sick again in the end of that again. Sometimes people get sick during their three or four times a year. You have to go to the, the doctor and the doctor send it to the lab. So the, what they're actually saying to a patient like that is that if not, down in January, you burn up your $500. So any labs going forward, you have to go down in your pocket and pay for it. No, no, could that be right? No, you, no. See, you see, when, you, when you're looking at uh, social policy, right, you have to realize that there are a number of people who for years may not get sick at all. I um, mean, I go, go have to use the same type of services as, as someone else. I don't know if you're following me. I respect that, yes. There's some people that will not require the level of service that, that some others will require. So that's one of the things with designing a, a social service. It, 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 it's, a, it's what you call a broad net, a wide net. So it encompasses a lot of differences. The, yeah, bottom, you. the bottom line is, though, Carla, right, is that it should, it should stop uh, the, the less fortunate from, from being disadvantaged. And I think from the stories I've heard so far, I think that is happening. Because persons who normally wouldn't be allowed to afford service can now afford service. Okay, so you're saying that that person who could barely make the contribution of $300 a month, it's been deducted from their salary, and because they were sick in January and used up the five hundred dollars, if they get sick two or three more times, no, you don't see they cannot. They are not able to pay for the last going forward. No, that's seriously unfortunate for that person, those individuals. Well, there's there's another there's a totally other side to this, um, Carla, that that speaks to um to managing wellness, and I think you're going to see some more uh, activities in that area, which is, you know, you, you, you're going to ha we're going to have to promote wellness, meaning more exercising, better diet, you know, the whole nine yards. I think you're going to see more, more of that coming, coming to um, the physician. Uh, Courtney, I, 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 would think that, I would think that you're not, irrespective of all you just talk about, that there are some people who are just sickly. Yes, they are. They are. I mean, I mean, there is no fault to this. There I mean, is no fault. I, I agree. I totally agree with you with that too. And I think that's a, maybe that's a, a, a separate category that needs to be looked into as well. And and don't forget too, persons who have uh, how how to put this without offending anybody. People who have handicaps, right, or who are in a handicap situation that we know that for their lifetime, they will be in that same situation. I think that those, yeah, yeah. those people too need to have some special arrangement as well. That's, my, ta that's my take on it. Difficult challenge. Yeah, exactly. Difficultly challenged. I think that those persons, they need to be in a separate bracket as well and taking care of different from you and I. One more thing before I go I need to talk about mm -hmm. is under the NHI the same way because another friend of mine went to the eye specialist to check on his eyes, and he was told that his glasses actually is gonna cost something like six hundred dollars. Yes. In to in total. Yes. But NHI is only contributing two hundred dollars of that six hundred dollars for two years. That's on the website too. No, like I say, I respect all that you have seen on the website. What I'm concerned about. How is that going to affect the work for somebody who needs the glasses and could therefore to pay for the glasses? How is that going to work? 
When you could have Lucario, you're going to work. Well, well, you you, you make your contribution every month. Yeah. And, and, and it's crazy to your neck because, I mean, some people can barely afford it. Mm -hmm. But you badly need your glasses. And before you had an insurance, that would have taken almost all the cost of that glasses. Now you're faced with a situation where they're telling you for two years, the only money they're contributing to your glasses is $200. And you're going to have to find the $400. No, you need your glasses. No, your eyes are bad. Where do you go? How, how does this work? Again, again, I, I, I feel, I feel in the interest of, 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 uh, of going forward. That's, that's probably an area that needs addressing as well. You know. Look, I, I personally support the NHI a hundred percent. But at the jet go, the mm hearing, -hmm. it doesn't really speak to well. mm -hmm. And it's not that, it's not that I'm taking back my word. I am behind the NHI a hundred percent still. I never anticipated any kind of amendment they pass. We need some fast amendments. Yeah. We need some quick amendments. You're we need to fix some of these things quickly. You because this this sounds really bad. You're reminding me of another talk show that I was listening to and I say that when we have problems related to the financial services sector, we could pass a bill for second and third reading immediately. All right, my brother. I don't have to say the rest, right? All right, my brother. So then we need some immediate amendments. We need some. We need. We need some. 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 Some serious care. I, I, I would say uh, in a number of areas. But anyway, um, good. thanks for that. All right. Thanks for the call. Yeah. See that. Yeah. Minutes. I really have some limits. Yeah. And they need to really go back and um, double check them limits. Yeah. Because people paying money, man. Yeah. People can get upset. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. You yeah. taking two, three hundred dollars out somebody paycheck, yeah. and then you One. telling them they can't get the same service as the insurance they were paying for before, right? Or to the amount that they're paying in. Yeah, they can get yeah. upset. Yeah, that's 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 true. That's common. That's that's just people. Yeah, a, t a text I came in said, based on the current financial state of the territory, how does the leader justify buying a vehicle that costs over ninety thousand? Maybe. He didn't need a new one, but come on, so much of taxpayers' dollars, so many people unemployed and can't pay their bills or buy food. Many young people can't get work. It could have been cheaper. That's a text that came in. Another one said, $300 for lens, $200 for frames, and $50 for appointment. <laughs> They're talking about the glasses, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good night, gentlemen. As a concerned citizen of Virgin Garda, I'm appealing to police officers and parents to visit the park at night. It's a park in a day, and well, I could only guess what the person going to say for the rest. But if that's the situation, they need to look, they need to pay attention to that. Good night, gentlemen. That's the same as a concerned citizen. Yeah. Good evening. You really speak your mind. Go right ahead. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Um. I'm trying to um, get some information, or I don't know how to do it, but um, I would like to know, uh, we are trying to collect more revenue for uh, the government, trying to call, collect more revenue, and and I guess sometimes government has to do that, but my concern is that um, what about people that rent in lots of apartments and lots of holiday homes and different things like that and the government collect just the basic like somebody have one home and they pay a certain amount of tax and somebody that has ten apartments or holiday homes or different things like that. Do they pay the same kind of tax like the person that has one house? No. Oh so they pay different types of tax. Yes, they have to pay. They have, they have, there's a different structure depending on the type of business you have, and depending on the value, depending on the value of what you have. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because that is a type of revenue also that can be Yes, money. yes. Yeah, because um, I am glad that the government is trying to find out it because government. <laughs> a 
not cry anything. Sometimes uh, I, I, when I was working in hotels and I talked to people that come in the island and they find out what our talk revenue is, sometimes they do to the after that we, we are not that badly off. We are taxed with concern. Mm -hmm. So that was my concern to find out if people that have just one house or people that live in different houses or stuff if they are being a different type of tax. Thank you. Okay, well, thanks a lot for your call. Okay. Yes, but bear with, bear with. we're going to have to um, wrap up now because we, we're running out of time. Uh, we had a, a show with a, a number of topics. We were able to talk about taxes, the, 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 the budget 2016 coming in at 330 million. We talked a bit about the NHI. We took some calls and took some texts as it relates to some of the challenges. And, and I, I like to add on opportunity when I talk about challenges because challenges are also opp opportunities. Opportunities for correcting, opportunities for tweaking, etc., etc., etc. We talked a bit about the road conditions and the ongoing works and, you know, better communication with our people. Do you have any last words you want to leave with our viewers before we go? Just want to say, um, don't be so angry when you hear about taxes or you think the country broke. The country ain't really that broke. Not like how people want to put it as, say. We have some hard-working people in um, the finance department and all other accounting officers for the government offices. When you say they're overspending or they're doing something wrong, you have to understand these people are just like us. And they ain't really doing anything wrong outside of what they mandated to do. And the uh, FS, they're doing a good job to me in trying to keep the country afloat. All they're doing is doing what they could do. In cars, regardless, whoever government in, the staff remain the same and the staff have a job to do. And they wouldn't let any politician come and do what they want and broke the country. So the country ain't really broke, but we have to watch and be mindful of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the fees need to go up in some government offices, and that's a true fact. Mm -hmm. We have fees there from since 1965 and 1975, and we're in 2015, 2016. Mm -hmm. So that's years on top of years mm -hmm. and everything education again the budget may be budget, uh, budgeted at 50 million you send your children to school for free it's a public school we don't pay any lab fees any paper fees we don't do anything how we do is send our children to school mm -hmm. and we pay for their school books yes but it ain't cheap to run you have to pay teachers you gotta pay electricity so when you hear the government say they're going to raise taxes, don't worry, it ain't your payroll tax again. They're gonna, they have to raise fees. Any business, they have to raise fees to keep up with the time. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't be a, so angry at times. It's just, let's just level. Everything can be all right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you, see, you speak about level, and I think that's important because, yeah. you know, economics is, is really about, you know, how you manage yeah, it's all about money. What, what you have, and, and, and be it money, land, uh, any, any asset that you have, you have to manage it properly, or else you, you wouldn't be doing a good economic job. Yeah. So sometimes some of the cries of the, of the people in the community is maybe we, we, we don't have to, to be so, so much of a spendthrift in a time when the revenue is not as, 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 as flowing as it should be. Yeah. So, I think, ladies and gentlemen, we all have to encourage our, our, our various um, colleagues and individuals to, you know, to take a second and a third look at, at what you're doing. And if, if there's any way that you can cut, cut costs, and if there's any way that you could uh, come in on budget, you know, you know tr make an extra effort to come in on budget with the various things that we're doing, uh, especially government government funds, which is really the people's funds. Yeah. 
and and be mindful that you know the, the people are the boss and you're working for your boss and do do the right thing and 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 be upstanding and as, as I usually say at this time, God bless these Virgin Islands and the people that live in them and we'll see you again next week. <laughs>